The politics of democracy is everybody's responsibility. It is everybody's responsibility because it is an art of the well-being of everybody. The well-being of everybody can only be possible when everyone participates actively in the construction of that society. People participate actively when their participation is not being ignored or pushed aside by some forces like that of wealth. When a driver drives foodstuff from the farms to the market, it's because they know that they have to feed investors, CEOs, employers, ministers, magistrates, and even the head of state. On the other hand, these wealthy guys have to also create favorable conditions for these drivers to do their job properly. That is, sacrificing some of the powers of decision making or giving more powers to these drivers to do the work properly. When a driver drives for long distances through rough and dangerous route for about 5 to 8 hours transporting goods and persons from one place to the other, we call them heroes and we should recognize that they are so careful enough to make sure passengers arrive at their destinations safely. When women and children have to run to buses to sell water and food like roasted plantain and plums to some hungry and tired drivers and passengers, we call that hard work. These women and children have to do this to feed and educate themselves. They feed passengers and drivers. They feed their own families and educate themselves. Educating themselves for wood though, probably for the well-being of the nation. Aren't they hardworking? Why should they end a lesser voice in decision making, while more voice is given to those having all the money? Some children, because they can't afford to educate themselves due to poor family status, work on farms to get life going. The corn and other foodstuff they produce equally fit the children from wealthy families who are being driven to, to schools in sophisticated and expensive cars. In most of our villages, poverty and misery reign. Families lack good drinking water, lack well-equipped health centers, lack well-equipped house schools, lack electrical energy, but blessed with food. What they mostly have as drink is palm wine tapped from palm trees. They consume naturally. They don't have industries that pollute the air with toxic gases. Why should they be regarded as less successful and undeserving of a voice, while the wealthy investors who pollute and consume far more 
and drives the world to a collapse is regarded as successful and hence should have an upper hand in decision making. Go closer. Parents who formally or informally educate their children are not educating the children for their sake. They are educating these children for the sake of the nation. But what have become of our moral and intellectual values? When a child is educated in a society, he educates himself for the well-being of that society. When he starts pointing the wrongs of that society, the leaders or wealthy authorities start looking at him as a threat to them why then quit schools and at the same time suppress or kill ideas provoked by that education when you hear the story of public phone embezzlement the funny thing behind it is that most of these embezzlers are highly educated Cameroonians who were trained with state funds who have attended renowned institutions in Europe and North America. My worry again is, why should educated people be doing such a thing? Does it mean that the more people you educate, the more you push society to a collapse? If yes, then we need to slow down. If no, then let's embrace the approach of separating wealth from power, because everyone with wealth or with power fall in this traps or in this trap of more money more power which is the main root of corruption and has completely taken over democracy and government Which of these farmers desperately need a cordless? Is there any fairness or sense for this farmer having the cordless? I think this farmer really needs a cordless because his bush is far thicker than the farmer. Yes, this is what this farmer should do. He shouldn't own the cutlass and leaving the guy with a heavier bush with no cutlass. This guy really needs a cutlass because he has a thicker bush. It reflects our society. Wealthy guys with economic power, I don't think they need political power. Give political power to those who are not wealthy.